Hey guys, it's Gameface here, and welcome back to episode 26 of my League United career mode. Now today, we're hopefully going to be making a few new signings, getting through some of these uh, pre-season tournament games that I have coming up as well, and hopefully just making some sort of decent Premier League squad. This is my starting level at the moment, uh, and that is pretty much the team that I would put out right now if I was to play a Premier League game. Uh, this is the team I'm going to be putting out though, in fact, mmm, is it? No, we'll go with the actual starting 11 team, thinking about it, for this game against uh, Cagliari. And hopefully we can get ourselves three points to overtake them. But before I get into this episode, if we could go hit 15 likes on this video, it would be really appreciated. Also, don't forget to go subscribe as well. And yeah, that would be fantastic. We have hit 2,900 subscribers now. Uh, I'm hoping to hit 3,000 before the end of the year. I'm pretty sure we will do. But if you could go help me out and hit the subscribe button, that would be really appreciated. Let's move on to this game now. We are going to sim the match as I generally do, to be honest, uh, with these pre-season tournament matches. Hopefully we can beat Kegulari, but I'm not too sure. They've got a few decent players. Sal there, obviously getting the goal, uh, who is a very good player, very fast, I think, as well. Uh, we're into the second half now, still losing the game at 1-0. Smith has been sent off for two yellow cards after getting booked in the first minute. And this has not been helpful at all. Come on, let's get a goal. Just five minutes left, and I think it's going to finish 1-0. It does. So we lost that game, and now we just need to hopefully clinch on to second place in this group stage. Transfer offer in again from Aston Villa, this time for Will Buckley. Uh, for those of you who don't know, we had a bid in from Aston Villa uh, for Charlie Taylor in the previous episode. This time it's Will Buckley, and I want to try and get as much money for him as possible. He's one of the most expensive players I actually have, and he's obviously up for sales. So I'm going to try and get 3.2 million for him, and I'm hopeful that uh, they'll go and match that. Uh, Man City have again rejected the loan offer for Fabian Delph. Again, I thought I'd go with a short-term loan, but they've just pretty much said they're not interested. Tommy Smith has picked up a one-match ban. I think I need to get in another centre-back. Now, it's Saul Bamber on the way out, hopefully. Uh, I think he's listed anyway. We need to uh, try and uh, get his replacement in, basically. Yeah, Bamber's listed. Uh, we need another replacement. I've got some players I've sent in bids for. I'm just kind of waiting as to how um, they respond to the wage offers or how the clubs respond to the bids. So I'm hopeful that we can get another centre-back. We desperately need another one uh, because at the moment our cover is a little bit thin in the centre-back position. Let's simulate all those drills. Hopefully get some of the youngsters there up in overalls. And we do actually, we've got a few decent upgrades there. Patrick Roberts, not going up in overall, but going up uh, in attributes there. His agility, 91, I never really picked up on that. He's a very good agility there from Patrick Roberts. And hopefully we can get some of his other stats up nicely as well. Transfer for in here for Charlie Taylor. It's another one, this time from Bolton. And I'm going to ask for 1.5 million for Charlie Taylor. A little bit over his value, but I think it's a worth amount uh, for Charlie Taylor. Now we've got Connor Wickham saying that he's accepted the contract. Same with this centre-back as well, who I think I'm just going to call Kara. Just going to be easier so I don't mispronounce his surname. And again, I'm desperate to get in this centre-back, so he will be the first of the two that I sign. And it looks like I might not have quite enough money to get in Connor Wickham. He's going to cost me £3 million, uh, and Chris Woods. So maybe I'll change around the wage budget and see whether I'm going to have enough. And it looks like right now I won't quite have enough to get in Connor Wickham. I still need another six hundred and sixty-eight grand. I'm just wondering, and I've just had a kind of a, a random thought, do I get in Jamie Vardy and not Connor Wickham? It's tempting, it really is tempting to get in Jamie Vardy. He's obviously been on a great scoring run recently. I am a little bit tempted to try and get him in. I'm going to inquire out and see how much Leicester are after for him. Maybe I try and get Jamie Vardy in and not Connor Wickham. And player sold Charlie Taylor has gone to Aston Villa. Uh, they did obviously match the 1.4 million, but we got 1.2 million for him. And we have Sporting Lisbon saying that the, the bid is unacceptable. They're not interested in the player I've included. And this was one of the suggested comments uh, from you guys in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, it looks like I'm not going to be able to get him in. Sadly, he's going to be a little bit out of my price range for this season. Maybe I have another go in January or at the end of the season to try and get him in. But he's certainly a player who looks quite good. Calvin Phillips has also accepted my new contract that I offered him in the previous episode as well, which is very good news. Uh, who's this guy going to Newcastle? He does look pretty good, actually, doesn't he? His pace is very good, his finishing is pretty decent, and he's gone for 17.5 million, so he's one to look out for. Uh, I've never heard of him before, to be honest, so a bit of a strange one, but we will quickly change around the team, hopefully come up with some sort of winning side. Jack Butland's now available again. 
our Chuck in Bamber. This might be his last game for us, potentially. Uh, I think that's the team I'm going to be putting out. Is that the bench I can put out? Yes, it is. Let's see how we get on. This is the game that determines whether we go through or not, I believe. Uh, if we win this game, yes. If we win this game, we do come second. So, it's quite an important match. We need to try and win it. And here we go. Can we get ourselves a really good win? Yes, we can. Hopefully, anyway. Alex Mott scoring three minutes in. A very good start for us. And uh, now 25 minutes into this game. Still only 1-0. Not managed to get a second yet until Byron makes it 2-0. 33 minutes in. Into the second half now. And I will skip in 3-2-1. We won the game 3-0, except Lewis Cook's got two yellow cards, and that's another suspension for us. So that does mean that we have gone through into the next round, and we now have Copenhagen uh, in the next round, which is the semi-finals. Look at this, though. Bernard has sealed a deal to move to Schalke from Shakhtar Donetsk, and that is another big signing made in the transfer window. Let's have a look at these transfer offers here, though. Aston Villa saying they have matched um, the 3.2 million for Will Buckley, which is fantastic. Great to get some more money for him. Jamie Vardy inquired, they only want 2 million. What a bargain that could be. I'm just going to go ahead with 2 million, I think. Or do I push for 1.8? I might push for that. He's 29 years old now, but I'd love to get in Jamie Vardy, who could be a really good goal scorer for us. And uh, we've got prize money of 864 grand. That's pretty good, actually, considering it's not a massive tournament, this one, is it, that I've joined. And Tommy Smith's obviously got come back from his suspension. I've got Lewis Cook, who's now suspended. But Connor Wickham, I don't think I should sign him. I've kind of changed my mind at the last minute. Jamie Vardy would be a huge signing for us, another English player as well. And I quite like the idea of getting him in there instead of having Connor Wickham. Player sold. Will Buckley's gone to Aston Villa. 2.7 million is added onto our transfer budget. We've got a final scout report on this player as well. Don't recognise the name. Uh, he's a free agent, 58 overall, and he's got that scouted just to kind of see whether he was good enough to sign. He looks okay. I'm going to add him to our short list. Uh, he's nearly 60 overall, and he's only 17, so maybe I get him in. I don't think... I'm desperate to get to him right now, but I could wait a little while just to see how he grows over the next few months. Now onto the semi-final match. Let's see, can we get a win? This is the team I've gone with. Hopefully good enough to beat them. We've got Deli Alley there in the midfield and uh, NG up top if you can't quite see them. Let's see, can we get a win and get into the final? It's going to be a tough match this one. I really think we're going to struggle here. But this will be a definite test to see how we get on against some of the better teams. Obviously now that we're in the Premier League. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how we get on against uh, a slightly better team here. We are 40 minutes in, it's still nil-nil into the second half now. Dwight Gale's come on, Engie's been taken off, Alex Mott getting books, hopefully doesn't get another one and get suspended. Uh, I just noticed Dan Marty's actually playing, he's a quality youngster. Um, 80th minute now though, and it's still nil-nil, and um, we finished the game 5-4 on penalties. We lost on penalties. Brilliant. But look at this, Leicester City have brought some positive news. 1.8 million has been accepted for Jamie Vardy. We're going to try and get him on our three-year deal. And I think it's going to be a... Is he going to be a crucial or an important player? I'm going to go important player. And we'll go three-year deal, 15 grand a week. And hopefully he agrees to that deal. And tournament prize money in 1.152 million. Which is actually pretty good considering I lost in the semi-final. So I'll happily take that. Suspension over there for Lewis Cook. And it will be the end of, I think, Connor Wickham. I'm not going to actually decline it just yet, because you never know. Jamie Vardy could reject the deal. Who knows? Let's quickly do some more player drills. Again, the same five players for this month. And can we get them up in overall? Batiste there, flying up some of, that, you know, some of his attributes there. Uh, nearly at 64 overall. Again, looks to be growing quite a lot. And I'm hoping that we can create a really good young team this season that can challenge for like a mid-table finish. But anyway, Jamie Vardy has accepted the 15 grand. We've managed to get him in. What a signing that's going to be. And we're just on the second season. We've already got Jamie Vardy in. What a signing. I can't believe that. So unexpected as well. He's only 72 overall on this, which is probably the reason why I've got him for so cheap. But he's going to be such a good player for us. I've just got a feeling... He's got loads of pace, and he's a decent finisher as well. So I'm really happy with that signing. Hopefully going to get him up to one of the higher overalls as well. 
I'm just going to try and fit him into the team somehow. Okay, due to the signing of Jamie Vardy, I'm going to have to change around my strikers a little bit. I'm probably going to have to sell one or two. Uh, Hughes here, he's going to go on a two-year loan. He's 16 years old. I'm not really going to use him. So I'm going to do that. I've got end user loaning. I'm obviously not going to cancel his own. That would be ridiculous to do uh, because he scored so many goals for us. He will be staying in the club, but I'm going to have to just decide, do I get rid of Chris Wood or do I get rid of Dwight Gale potentially? I think Chris Wood's great to have as an aerial threat, but will I actually use him? I've got Heskey, who I desperately want to keep. I'm not going to get rid of Heskey. I'm hoping that um, he just wants to retire at the club at some stage. I want to try and get into 40, to be honest. Uh, that'd be brilliant to see, but uh, I want to try and keep Heskey. So I'm actually going to get rid of Chris Wood, I think. He's unhappy he should play more. Uh, I'm just not a huge fan of him in-game. I quite like him in real life, but in-game, I'm not a huge fan of the way he plays. Um, Dwight Gale, though... Do I get rid of him? He's got really good finishing, Dwight Gale, and he's fast. I think I'm going to sadly have to get rid of Chris Wood and hopefully just get in a little bit of money for him to try and cover the cost of, obviously, Jamie Vardy. We've got some more emails to look at. This time it's just some scout reports. Uh, I've got this player here, um, Jean Kirchhoff, is it, or something? Six foot five. I didn't realize he was that tall. 74 overall from Bayern Munich, and it was suggested in the comments of one of the previous videos to try and sign him. However, he's on 40 grand a week, which is a lot of money, obviously. Um, if I was to get him in, it would probably have to be a loan deal. Uh, again, that'd be a really good signing, but I don't want to kind of freeze out those young English players, because if I was to get him in, then I'd have to get rid of Lewis Cook, or I'd have to put him on the bench anyway, and it would kind of just freeze a few different players out, unless I was using him as a centre-back, which could be an interesting idea, um, maybe as well, but for now I think I'll leave it and kind of just see whether I need another centre-back or not. I've also got this other guy that I was scouting as well, uh, he doesn't look that great yet, that's because he's so young though. And um, Patrick Roberts wants to replace uh, Will Buckley in his position, so maybe he does, not really too sure whether he's quite a, a good enough quality to replace him yet, but we'll just have to see. Oh no, this is the email I was dreading. Boss, this might be my last season playing football. I'm considering hanging up my boots at the end of the season. I'm not sure I can continue to perform at a level that does justice. So I'll be thinking long and hard about my career this season. Emil Heskey might well be retiring. Sad, sad news. Wow, I was not expecting that this season. I thought it would be next season, really. Um, anyway, we've got some scout reports back. This time it's Diego Reyes, who looks like a really good centre-back, to be honest. Almost too good for us. So I think, again, we'll have to wait... A little bit. I'll add him to my shortlist though because he's definitely one to keep an eye on. And Jonathan Rodriguez, a striker that I was looking at, again looks really good, but he's probably going to be a bit out of our price range. Um, Kongulu, Kongolo, again looks really good, and he's probably going to be out of our price range yet again, but he's tall, left footed, and fast. That's kind of really what you look for nowadays in a centre back, uh, or a left sided centre back anyway, so. I'm sadly not going to be able to afford those players, but we will move on to again training some more of my youngsters and uh, trying to get them up in overall. Patrick Roberts again flying up in the attributes there. Nearly at 70 overall, that would definitely make him more appealing to use. Engie needs to get up to 75 desperately though, he's so, so close now. And uh, we're moving nearer towards the Spurs game in the Community Shield. Scout report back on um, Pereira, the player that I was trying to obviously sign. He's got some brilliant stats there. He's 76 overall for a 20-year-old. That's brilliant. Uh, I'd really like to get him in, but again, do I have enough money? I'm not really too sure whether I do. He's an important first-team player, so I probably can't get him in on loan. Uh, can I buy him? Maybe. I'm not really too sure. He's a good left-sided player. I might look at him at another time. Transfer offer in here for John Hughes is from Barnett. It's only a loan deal, two-year loan, and hopefully get him some experience um, out of that club. And Scarapot back on Berahino does look very interesting, actually, because he might be able to leave, I think, on a pre-contract agreement this season. So maybe I'll look out for him in January. I believe he can leave. Anyway, I'm not 100% sure on that. But he's got 12 months left on his deal, and I believe he turns 23 before then. Could be wrong, though. We'll find out in January. And another transfer offer in, this time for Casper Sloth from Bolton. Bolton again trying to poach some of our players. Sloth is obviously on the transfer list, though, I believe. Uh, so I need to try and get rid of him. 
I'm going to push for a million from Bolton. It seems like a lot of money. They're already in a lot of debt, in case you didn't already know. Uh, so whether they do want to match that one million, I'm not really too sure. But we are starting now to pick up quite a bit of money. We've still got a few players to try and sell. So we could genuinely sign someone that's pretty good again, which would be amazing to have in the team. We'll have to have a look where our weak points are at the moment in the side. Uh, I can't really see too many. The left back, obviously, is the weakest uh, position. But that's Joe Gomez, who we've recently signed. So I'm going to have a little look at the team in the next episode and kind of see where we need to improve. Obviously, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions yourself. But obviously, take into account all the team, the fact I want to try and keep as many young English players in the side as well. So that's something to think about. But that is it for this episode, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you do enjoy this, then please get the thumbs up button and also go subscribe as well. Let's try and hit 15 likes on this episode. That'd be absolutely fantastic. And like I said, let's try and get closer to 3,000 subs as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll do that before the end of the year, but who knows? We'll just have to see. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.